breakfast special, I guess, Danny. Black coffee. Sure, Wally. Ma's on the warpath, Wally. Oh, yeah? Yeah. No more truck talk with the kid. She sort of laid down the law before you came in. Now, I don't want to hear any more about it. Now, you go on out and tidy up the restroom. Oh, Ma, not now. Now. Mighty good, Ma. How do you feel today? Okay, Wally. But I got something to say, and I might as well say it, like I told the others. No more truck talk with my Danny, if you don't mind. Well, whatever you say, Ma, but how come? Wally, you've been coming here for years, and I like you. But Danny, well, he sort of idolizes you. And your job. Well, all I know is he's nuts about trucks. And there's always a job for a good truck driver. I just... I know, Wally, I know. But I don't want to lay awake nights worrying about Danny fighting some heavy truck along a lonely highway. It's not safe, especially for a youngster like him. Well, now, Ma, just a minute. Maybe way back when us old dogs started in this trucking, you'd have had some reason to worry. But not today. Wally's right about that, Ma. Why, heck, in those days, we did our breaking from the seat of our pants. <laughs> yeah, and steering the old rigs was really horse and haul, eh, Blake? Oh, yep, with one foot up against the dash on those sharp corners. And the cabs, Wally, colder than a park bench in January. Yeah, it sure was rough in those days. But look at it now, Ma. The rigs are better built and easier to handle. The cab is comfortable in all kinds of weather, and when you're pushing her over the road, you know you've got power brakes you can depend upon and steering almost like a pleasure car. Then the job itself has changed. Used to be a tough racket, sure. But today we're part of a big industry. It's important and respected. A good living, Ma. Good pay and plenty of responsibility. And besides, they don't usually put kids like Danny on the big rigs. So if he really wants to do some trucking, he'd probably make out all right. That's what I've been trying to tell her, Wally. But she won't listen. What you got against trucking anyway, Ma? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just thought, oh, never mind. Look, kid, if you're dead set on doing a little driving, I mean, if you don't want Ma to say I told you so, maybe some tips from the old hands here. Oh, gosh, Wally, what's so tough about driving a truck? Well, it's not as easy as it looks, Danny, with today's requirements. And there's a whale of a lot in doing the job right. There are truck drivers, period. And there are guys who take pride in their work. And some can get more out of a truck than others just by driving it right. Take speed, for instance. Some of these young leadfoots are always figuring ways to beat the legal limits, knocking out their rigs so they can spend more time with some hash-slinger and brag about their hotshot driving. Well, if they were half as good as they talk, they'd think of the truck and realize illegal speed saves brakes, tires, gas, oil, and the load. Easier on the driver, too. Cuts fatigue. And fatigue is what gets you in the most highway accidents. Ask any experienced driver, Danny, and he'll tell you that safe driving is just plain good driving. You take care of one, and the other comes along with it. You fellas agree? Well, you can't argue with that, Wally. Look. Maybe a rough diagram will show Danny that saving gas at the legal speed isn't just something the boss preaches. Now look, kid. Let's make this line miles per hour and this line pulling power in pounds. Now, the torque or pulling curve of the engine would look something like this, while the horsepower line would go like this. But here's the important curve, gas consumption. Notice that through here it's low and flat. So that's why this is called the economy range. And within that economy range, you also get your best power performance. And you're able to make good road speeds at the same time. Make sense? Sure, I, I think so, but... You don't have to be an engineer to drive a truck, kid. You can tell when you're in the gas-saving range by the feel of the rig. That's the power range, too. Right there, my rig just purrs along, smooth and easy. 
course, it varies with different trucks, Danny. Danny. Sure, but you learn to feel it on your truck and keep it there. That way, you use your head to save your truck and your neck, too, if you have to pull up in a hurry. You know, when it really comes down to saving your truck, how about lugging? Nothing beats up engines worse than that. And there's no reason for it these days. What Rogers means is that today, almost every heavy-duty truck has a modern two-speed axle. Some of them even have synchro mesh transmission. So there's no reason for the driver to let them lug. You see, kid, when you come onto a hill with a heavy truck, you gotta keep up your road speed. When that speed arm of the needle starts to drop, you're losing momentum. And the engine has to strain if you try to stay in the same gear. You have to act fast because of the heavy load behind. By itself, a tractor can glide along like a kid on roller skates. But with a heavy load, it takes plenty of power to get moving. Well, the good driver gives his engine every break he can to keep moving. The minute he starts losing road speed, he either switches from high to low axle or shifts down, or maybe both. But he doesn't wait until the engine screams for mercy. He pops her right into the right gear at the right time to keep rolling. Same with traffic and lights. You can save a lot of wear and tear on both yourself and your truck by timing lights and traffic to hang on to your momentum and avoid shifting. Of course, you can't make them all, but by hanging back, you can make a gradual stop. Or maybe you only have to shift down one gear. That way, you're saving brakes, tires, gas, oil, and yourself. And here's another thing, Danny. With smaller rigs like mine, you make a lot of stops and starts. Well, if you sit there worrying the accelerator at red lights, you waste about a teaspoonful of gas every time you ram down. The same thing when you start up. Feed her faster than she can take it, and you'll just throw gas away. And senseless things, like slamming into the curb on stops, riding the car tracks all the time, whipping around corners, or roaring up to a stop sign and then jackrabbiting away. Bad driving habits that don't help you or your truck. Having some consideration for your own rig makes it easier on you. Trucking's hard enough work, so why make driving harder with needless wear on your equipment? Being jealous of his equipment never hurt any driver, I guess. That's why you'll find good drivers like Blake here checking over his equipment before every run. Things like tires, fifth wheel, rear views, and only starting out after they've warmed up the engine. But Danny, that's the way it is with good drivers. And you'll find them in every kind of rig. Farm trucks, city deliveries, tankers, stakes, pickups, high racks, off the road jobs, it doesn't matter. They all take pride in being able to get the most out of their rigs. And they'll qualify as good drivers in anybody's league. Well, kid, there's a lot more, of course. But we got a roll. Bye, Mom. Bye, boys. Think about it for a while. Maybe you'll change your mind. Not me. I'm sold on it, Wally. Even if Ma isn't. Well, I'll say this much. There's a lot more to truck driving than I realize. We'll both think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more thing you ought to know, Danny. The most important connection in any truck is the one between the steering wheel and the seat. Maybe you'll want to remember that, along with the rest of us. <laughs>